youtube -iverse. This is Johnny Radio, John Sanek here, and Jake Hill, I call him Jakey, and uh, today we are talking about Nirvana's Nevermind from 1991, and uh, before we begin, let me just, just introduce you to Jakey here. He is uh, a great musician in his own right, and a writer, a blogger, a uh, political analyst, a um, overall good person, and I like to call him my friend, so give a hand to Jakey, everybody. Okay, and now back to the album. All right. Um, yeah, what can we say about this? I mean, it's just, uh, I give it a 10 out of 10, personally. What did you give it? Ooh, that's a great. Say 10 out of 10. Out of the way. Yeah, I think it's an A plus album. A plus. Uh, perfect all the way through. What can you say about it? I mean, it's, um, it's had such an impact, for better or for worse, on music. When it came out in 91, I was 13 years old. How old were you, Jake? Yeah, I was time? negative two. <laughs> negative two. So, wow, the memories. That's, oh, that's yes. amazing. Um, yes. And, you know, actually, the reason that I wanted Jakey to be in on this, um, I was just telling him, you know, uh, we've been friends now for, uh, I don't know, how many years? Negative two years? At least negative two years. At least that yeah. many. I think we'll be friends, you know, come 2018. Yeah, yeah. And I was remembering, <laughs> I think the genesis of that happened when uh, he was, uh, I was giving him and uh, someone else a ride in my car a long time ago, and he looked through my CD case and said, oh, uh, Nirvana, never mind, that's cool. And then it's been just all downhill from there. <laughs> so, um... Yes, good memories. Good yes, stuff. absolutely. So, uh, it, it, Kurt Cobain, you at least created a uh, a beautiful uh, bromance here for the world Ooh. to see. So, oh, yes, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> going from there, I think it we could go on and on about this record individually. So, to try and keep this as concise as possible, I'm thinking let's go with our um, our very favorite personal track from the record. And then uh, after that, we will discuss our what we think is our most underrated track from the record, and then what we think is our most, um, let's say, had the biggest impact uh, musically and socially and what, whatever. So uh, all right, sounds good. So you go first. What's your personal favorite Ooh, track let's on, me on this record? Refresh my brain. You know, it's always been between one of two songs on this record. Mm -hmm. um, Lithium with that just wonderful guitar intro and then Lounge Act has really? always been one of my favorites. Wow. And, and speaking of underrated songs, that might not be the most underrated song on the album, but mm -hmm. it definitely is something that I think people don't really talk about because it's kind of a, it's yeah. weird, it's, it's, I love it the wasn't little, a single. Uh, the bass intro. Yeah, yeah, that bass doom, intro doom, is just doom, great. Doom, doom, and doom, 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 doom. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It just it's got such a groove to it. Yeah. Um, and it's kinda dancey almost <laughs> in this weird punk rock sure. uh, way. But um I would I'm gonna go with Lounge Act right now. I'm feeling Lounge Act. I love uh just So that's everything. both your favorite and most underrated? I think? don't think it's the most underrated, but okay. it's okay. it's definitely underrated for the album because it's not yeah. a single, it's not something that uh, is I mean it's on a couple of the live albums just because they've had a million live albums since yeah um, in retrospect but uh, sure. it's something that's not emphasized as much I think and I think definitely that's one of my favorite songs okay um, okay well I will steal the other favorite that you okay. mentioned as my favorite and that's lithium uh, I just think you know it's probably one of his most brilliantly written the I, one of the most sarcastic uh, songs lyrically of all time, probably. Sure. sure. And um, to me, it's just um, it's also it, it kind of encapsulates both the uh, what makes Nirvana great is their the ability to kind of rage and still find that pop element, and also. There is genuine happiness at the same time as sadness, and it's like um, just this beautiful dichotomy that I love about Nirvana. And, sure, um, sure. I, I mean, yeah, the duality of that song, I think, like it encapsulates the band. I mean, just like anything from Smells yeah. Like Teen Spirit. Um, sure. But then you can think about how you know the bonus 
track or whatever, the hidden track, Endless yeah. Aimless, came out of Lithium. Right, yeah. Because they were so pissed off with having to record it over and over again. Yeah, yeah. And he was so unsatisfied with that opening guitar riff. Um, yeah. That the this crazy madness at the end of the record yeah. basically was jettisoned out of Lithium, which again, like you right. said, has these moments of genuine happiness, mm -hmm. these moments of weird frustration, of right. sexual frustration, of whatever. Yeah. Um, and the chord progression on lithium is just genius. It's like, I would never have even thought to come up with that. Sure. Um, I mean, very cool. Sure, for sure. As a guitarist. I think Cobain is a very underrated guitarist in general, so... Right. Um, that's definitely one of his best. Uh, so, as far as the most underrated on the album, uh, Endless Nameless, is that what you <laughs> A baby. I was yeah. actually just listening to that, and yeah. it's... Uh, it doesn't even know. make the track listing, so, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's technically on this record, um, uh, so, sorry, but... Um, I don't know, for me, underrated... Uh, I don't know that Territorial Pissings is underrated really like for me it, it's my second favorite song on the album um and it's just so uh, i love the visceral like the screamings on the end of it are uh i think probably his best um screams oh, sure. on record <laughs> but it's one of their most like genuine just punk rock songs yeah um i love territorial pissings i was uh thinking about this record a few weeks ago i was listening to the 2011 uh, limited edition that included the pre pre album like real album uh, mixes the yeah. actual mixes by Butch Vig that yeah. one is is the one that's the weirdest because um, it it drops that lead guitar line and a couple of the right the harmonies so it was, it was weird listening to it in maybe a more punk rock fashion uh, but I love territorial right. pissings too um, yeah mine. <sighs> It's it's a song that I don't love, but then I love so much. Yeah. Um, I think mine would have to be on a plane. Uh, uh, yeah. Stay away and on a plane. I think because of where they are on the album, right. and they weren't singles, and they're not necessarily standout tracks. I think they're both uh, maybe throwaway tracks for some people, but they're really good tracks on their own. Sure. And then um, actually, I think listening to a cover or two of On a Plane. Mm -hmm. um, kind of reminded me how good of a song it actually is. Yeah. Um, I think that would be my most underrated song for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they're all great. I mean, that's the thing. There's really not a song that on this album that it is not great. Was that enough double negatives? <laughs> but uh, seriously, this oh, is... Well, well, ever, never mind, man. That's what makes an A-plus <laughs> album for me. Yeah, is like, yeah. Uh, it takes it over the top. Because, you know, there's some... Uh, records from some of my favorite bands that just have like that one song that you're like could they have just dropped that and this certainly is not one of them I mean um, Polly and something in the way too I mean I could go on and on about those and just the simplicity of and how crappy his acoustic guitar <laughs> sounds and how that adds to the beauty of it um, but nonetheless I think I'm gonna go as far as um, It'd be easy to say it smells like teen spirit as far as what had the most impact. I'm going to say uh, Come As You Are for me because that was the one that really just sold me on Nirvana. Like, smells like teen spirit. I remember when it came out and there was just wave of paranoia all over MTV of like, you all have to like this and uh, or else type thing. And... Um, which was interesting because that was kind of the antithesis of what Nirvana was about at the time. Uh, but of course a great song and everyone realized they were great. But then it wasn't until Come As You Are dropped that I was like, okay, these guys are, are more than just this new like punk rock band. They've got mystery and uh, a real dark side to them and, and just that that bass riff um, and and the lyrics which now have so many double meanings sure, at this sure. point uh, but again that's that's another of those songs that's just been covered uh, probably millions of times and yeah almost in a way is underrated in itself because it's not one that you necessarily see at, at the top of the list of like mm -hmm. greatest rock songs of all time sure. but it's 
It is, in my opinion. Sure. And I mean, it's it's one of the more mellow songs, I guess, mm -hmm. on the album. Uh, yeah. But it's also the only... Is it the only song from this record that made it onto their acoustic set? Um, uh, no, I th you're talking about Unplugged? Yeah. I think, actually, On a Plane was on that. And, okay. Uh, and the um, Polly was... Um, but definitely That's one of true. the only, true, true, true. one of the okay. only, yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know, for me, the one with the biggest impact, I don't, I mean, of course, Smells Like Teen Spirit, uh, would be the most impact, at least culturally, I mean, uh, it changed rock music, and it's a good song in its own right, of Do course. you feel like it's overrated? Uh, with the, yes and no, I mean, I think, for me, being born after this album, being born maybe after In Utero. I think In Utero came after I was yeah. born. Uh, but I mean, certainly I was I was <laughs> barely one years old <laughs> when Kurt Cobain died. So Were you uh, um, one of the fetuses on oh, the yes, artwork yes. of In Utero? Yes, I actually was. I, I was hanging from the tree. You weren't quite old enough to be this kid. <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah, and I, I, I would know. cover up my little oh, yeah, baby sorry. appendage. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm actually one of the fetuses hanging from the tree in the uh, oh nice heart shaped box video. Cool, but, uh, I'm glad you survived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, so I mean, smells like Teen Spirit. Ne never mind as a whole. I think changed music. I mean, yeah. it was a giant middle finger to Guns N' Roses, to hair metal, to everything. Yeah. Things that I am glad that I wasn't born during because I hate that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think for me, the the Nirvana song on this record. I don't know, it would be, uh, I mean, Lithium Breed, whatever, but also In Bloom. I love In Bloom. Yeah. I yeah, love yeah. Dave Grohl's drums on In Bloom. Uh, they're so massive, yeah. that fill between, yeah. you know, uh, that guitar riff that opens it, and then that fill that just booms. I mean, it, yeah. it's huge. And it's so cool to go back and listen to, um, ah, I can't remember the the drummer's name before Grohl came aboard, but they there was a version yeah, of In Bloom. Yeah, I think it was with uh, Chad Channing. Chad Channing, that's it, yeah. That's easy to remember. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Anyway, but yeah, Grohl, man, uh, oh my gosh. Obviously, everyone loves Dave mm -hmm. Grohl as a human being, and, um, you know, he's great in Foo Fighters, but he, I mean, Nirvana behind the drum kit, mm -hmm. to me, is just where he belonged. He was... Um, Definitely one of the best drummers ever. For sure. And, you know, songs like that, you can really hear the harmonies. I mean, he added so much vocally to the band, yeah. even though you don't think about it when you're listening to it. You're right. Like, oh, Kirk Cobain is just screaming. And, yeah. But, I mean, honestly, Dave Grohl, with his little mic behind the kit, he yeah. made those songs pretty <laughs> in exactly. some ways. Yeah. I mean, and Kirk Cobain did, of course, too. I mean, he could sure. sing when he tried. Yeah. Um, but when he was yelling and shouting, you still have Dave Grohl, you know. Yeah literally destroying those drum sets right, and, and right. but offering something new to that band. Sure. Yeah, and I, I think too, like uh Cobain vocally um sometimes is is seen as kind of lesser, uh, but the things that he could do, um not just screaming, but screaming melodically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's just I mean I'm envious of anyone who can do that, and, and he did it so well. For sure. Um, I mean, Grohl himself has said, like, there's no one... No, like I, I, yeah, I mean, so. the the melody, and not only the melody, but the the weird sort of controlled angst that mm -hmm. was Kurt Cobain. I mean, he channeled it in such a way, yeah. um, and I mean, he called himself out on that all the time. You see it in songs like Lithium. Right. He was full of contradictions, and I mean, we can say whatever we want about that. It's become a cliche, I think, honestly, about Cobain. Yeah. Um, but the amount of just beautiful control that came out of something so dark and messed up and twisted, and I mean, it's a it's a band that that hurts your ears to listen to to a degree, and that's yeah. why it was so revolutionary. But they're also a pop band. Right. I mean, they are a pop band who played punk music. Yeah. Um, they're not a grunge band. I know why they're associated with grunge, but they're not a grunge band. They're a pop band. He's channeling the yeah. Beatles and, uh, right. you know, butthole surfers at the same time. Right. It doesn't make sense, but yeah. it, it is what it is. And, and that's why I, I, I said for better or for worse earlier, sure. like the impact that they had. Because then, you know, you had whatever mud vein and 
puddle of mud or puddle of vein, whatever they are. Puddle of honey. I, I yeah, you know, all those bands coming out and saying Nirvana was their influence, and I'm sure they were, but um, I, you know, Nirvana and Cobain was very vocal about who his influences were and who he didn't want to right. influence. And, um, you know, I, to me, it's obvious when you really uh, have an ear for listening to good music and and not good music, um, what these guys were about. And Chris Novoselic, we love you too, man. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of a specific moment, or, um, but... I just he's, always think of him dropping his bass on his head. I'd be yeah. amazed. Uh, <laughs> yes, just for that alone, man, you are one of the greatest people. Uh, no, you know what I love, actually? And, I mean, this is silly, but... Just the little um, part where the little dropout on Polly, mm -hmm. and you just hear uh, Polly said, and the little doom, doom, doom. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's the pulse and the heartbeat oh, yeah, of, yeah. of Nirvana, so um, cannot go unsaid. So, um, yeah, again, uh, A plus album, man, 10 out of 10. 10 uh, out of 10. There's literally less than probably 20 albums that I give that rank. <laughs> to. What about you? Um... Yeah, I mean, it's one of the most impactful records for me. Uh, I mean, it introduced me into punk music, just like so many other yeah. other people. Um, it's not my favorite Nirvana record, honestly. I like, I think I like In Europe more. Um, so you give that a 110? Maybe. Like... I give that an 11 out of 10. Wow. Um, they're both 10 out of 10s, because I think That's both cool. records are perfect. Both records have... Yeah. Uh, there's not a bad song on either record. I think I, can go with that. I think Nevermind suffers from how radio accessible it is. Right. Um, it, you know, you can go into a Walmart now, and much to Cobain's dead chagrin, like they'll yeah. be playing "Smells Like Teen Spirit." Right. Um, so right. it's it's hard to listen to this record like we would have listened to this record twenty years ago, yeah. or twenty five years ago, come September. Sure. Um, twenty five years. Man. I know. Think about wow. that. That is crazy. Um, but, I, I mean, it's it's a great record. Definitely 10 out of 10. And definitely one of the few records, I think, that deserves a 10 out of 10. Absolutely. Um, and that's not just because of its influence. That's not just because of what Nirvana became, I think. Yeah, reg regardless of just any of the, the drama behind Cobain's life or, or whatever, you know, people want to talk about when they talk about Nirvana, just never mind. It's just one of the greats, you know, mm -hmm. up there with... Beatles Abbey Road and Led Zeppelin 4 and all that stuff. It's just, it's really that good. So if you haven't heard it, I don't know what's wrong with you, but um, you need to do that now. And also like and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, Viva La Vinyl. And um, yeah, go uh, read Jakey Hill's uh, blogs. I'll do that. <laughs> um, no, no, it's really, he's, uh, he's an awesome dude, and he has a lot of good things to say, so uh, do that. and Do that. Listen to Johnny Radio. Okay. All right. See you soon.